Welcome to another video. Somebody gave me these shoebox cassette players the other day, so I thought we'd have a look and see if we can get them to work. Um, it was a freebie, didn't have to pay for them. This one's a Harvard Elegance Mark II. I've had a look online uh, on YouTube and I can't find anything about these two. And this one, so I've never heard of Harvard, Harvard before. Um, I've heard of Sanyo, but this, this is a lighter one. Uh, and, I, and I'm guessing that this one is um, late 70s and this one is early 80s. And we had a black one of these uh, that we used to use in our house in the late 70s probably or early 80s. And I used it on my BBC Micro that I bought in 1983 or 84 to load and save games on. So I don't know whether they work. I've checked, there's no batteries in either of them. Oh actually I couldn't get the base off of this one. So let's have a look at this one first. I'm not even sure I've got the right size batteries here. I think I have. I think these used to have uh, bits of foam on them maybe to hold the batteries in correctly. Got my demo tape, which is copyright free. I assume it goes in the lid. No, it just pops in there like that. Nope, nothing. So let me have a listen. No, there's no motor sounds at all on this one. So this one's going to be set aside for a fixed video some other time. I'm not doing it now because it's quarter to eight and I'm exhausted to be honest. But let's have a look at this one in a bit more detail. So uh, it's a recording one. It's got the mic up this end. The speaker's in there. It's quite heavy. Nothing on that side. And it can be powered. Oh, it can be powered by mains and also um, a... I don't know what power that is. Oh, six volt DC, and it's center negative, which I have, I've got one that I can switch to center negative, but I won't do that at the moment. It's got uh, the earphone, so you can turn off the inbuilt speaker and listen through an earphone. It's also got uh, a mic and a remote. The REM stands for remote. So what we had a two pinned handheld microphone that you could plug in it had an on off switch and what i think it does is it opens or closes the circuit on this rim um, switch uh, which then cuts the power so if you're recording you can switch the mic off and it cuts the power and stops the tape from spinning and it was also used on the bbc micro you could get a cable that came out of the back of the um, 8-bit home computer from the 80s and it had um, three, I've actually got a lead, not, hand, not handy, but I've got one. It had um, uh, uh, a microphone, not a microphone, it had, yeah, the microphone uh, was for recording onto the tape. And there was an earpiece socket which would um, take the sound and then load the data from a cassette into the, into the computer. And it had one of these remotes built into the, to the cable. So the actual computer could stop and start the motor when it needed to. And there's our volume wheel. So on the bottom, you might be interested in that. You can stop and uh, stop the stop the video and have a look at that if you're interested. And I'm gonna take the batteries out. I'm not gonna fix this. Actually, let's look at this screw hole here. That looks like it's been opened slightly rounded off on that bottom edge by my thumb there. So my guess is someone's already been in to have a look at this and repair it. The guy said he thought one might work and one didn't work, but he wasn't, he didn't want them anymore and he said I could have them. So that one's gonna be the subject of a fix later on. Okay, so let's get some batteries in this one. Actually, I couldn't get the battery, to, oh, I couldn't get it open before, but now it's opened. Oh, there we go, so no batteries. Same batteries, yep. Now these are rechargeable, but if... 
sorry about that they are rechargeable but they're freshly recharged so i don't think it's an issue with not enough power in the batteries if that was the case then it wouldn't um it would spin but slowly Is there a jet? Well, that's a bit stiff. Yeah, my tape. Ah, oh, look at that. This is my demo tape. And I think the other cassette player has got hold of the tape and uh, chewed it up a little bit there. I don't know if you can see There you go. Can you see that? I'm sure it wasn't spinning, but maybe it's just a really sticky pinch roller. So let's put this one in. Press play. All right, so we've got, I'm going to take the tape out because it's not going to make it any better. But I think it will still fast forward. Let's have a look. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I can hear something. I can hear the motor running. Oh, it's rewinding, but it won't go forwards. Rewind. Ah, oh, look, yeah, so that is spinning gradually. Okay, so my guess is Could be belts, which is likely for the set player of this age. But when I press stop, it doesn't really stop very well. Got scratchy volume. It takes a long while to stop. Well, anyway, this is sort of working. So this one's got record as well. Oh yeah, one other function on this, it's got an LED recording indicator, which is very fancy, I guess, when this came out. So nothing on that side. On this side, we've got mains again. And we've got an earphone. There's that mic and remote button, and these are metal, so that's an older still than the other one. Both of them have a carrying handle. We've got a sticker that's not stuck on straight. Nice quality control there. Well, you can read that, is that better? And I reckon this is for cooling. And does it have a microphone in it? I don't think this has got a built-in microphone. Oh yeah, there we go. Little mic down the bottom there. Okay, so we've got a, a mains lead for this one. So that I think is the right socket. I don't know what fuse I've got. Brushy's plugs are fused, so in, inside this little cover is a fuse, and if it draws too much power, then the fuse blows and protects the person who's using it. But um, you want the right fuse, so my guess is this is a standard 13 amp fuse, but this should be fused at a, a lower amp, uh, a lower rating. So if this does cause a short, then it will blow the house fuses. So let me just plug this in. There we go, power on. So let's see what happens now. You see that? Yeah. Oh, listen. So we've got motor, and motor's working, but the tape, and it's on play, so that might be, that's very slow. All right, let's see if we can get some sound out of it. It's probably going to chew my tape up. It's way too slow. Oh dear. That's very sad. It's very slow. And very... I had that turned up to the maximum volume. So... 
Now I was looking at these online. I'd, someone gave them to me, so I've no intention of selling them. But it would be nice to have one working just so I can put some batteries in and uh, and take it, you know, into the garden or something like that to listen to it old, listen to a tape old school. So my guess is they both need belts, but why this one's quiet, I don't know. So it's on mains power, so it should, it must have a, a transformer inside it to take the mains power down to the six volts it needs. So again, this is going to have both of these uh, subject to a fix it video, I think. Now the problem I've got is if they both need belts, belts work out if I can get the right size, and I don't even know whether I can. Belts are going to work out about six to ten pounds each, and I could probably buy one that's working for about fifteen pounds on eBay. So, um, is it really worth me fixing them? I'm just wondering whether those batteries weren't very well charged, and whether this one will work. Um, are better on mains as well. Oh, Cracking, that's hard. No, nothing at all. No, I'm pretty sure the belts had it on this. Oh man, this is just after I shot the other video where I looked to see whether these ones are working. I might get my screwdrivers out and have a look at them. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll have a look at this one. If I was going to fix one, I like the look of this one better than the look of this one. Um, so let's uh, get a screwdriver out and see how far we get with this one. So if you remember, when I try to rewind on this one, it hardly moves at all, even when it's on main power, mains power. Likewise, uh, no fast forward and no play, but I can hear the motor. Let's see if you can hear it. So my guess is, my hope is that this is just a belt problem. And of course, if I get it working, then I've got to clean up the heads because they're probably filthy. Well, they don't look too bad. If you look, can you see in there? Well, I'm guessing that if I'm taking this to pieces, uh, the whole front part will come off, and that will give me access to what's inside. And then I can clean them a bit easier that way. So the one thing I worry about is I've just had this plugged into the mains, and this has a transformer in it that accepts mains and converts it to six volts to match the uh, power of the batteries and I'm not an electrical expert and I just worry that uh, there might be some charge stored in there somewhere and I might blow myself up so let's see how we go anyway okay so I've got a trusty screwdriver's handy and I just put this on here and what I've noticed can you see that let me have a look this is all bowed outwards and there's a scratch there and some dents here which lead me to think that someone's tried to get this open already it wouldn't surprise me. So, anyway, let's have a look. Let's see what we can do here. There's one, two screws there I can see, and two screws there. So, let's get a fairly large screwdriver bit out. So, oh, is there any? Are there any electrical experts out there watching this? If so, what should I do when I've been had this plugged into the mains? There's some transformer in there. Is there a large risk of shock if it's been unplugged for a little while? And also, if I was to do something like this, we just press play. Would that discharge any capacitors? Do these have capacitors? I don't really know. So if you're if you're an electronics engineer, only if you really honestly know what you're talking about, because I don't want to get just some hearsay and then find that I'm dead because it was wrong. Yeah, the screws are different. Look at that. 
So that's the front screw from the front of the unit. That's the back screw from the back of the unit. So what I typically do is whatever orientation I've got of the unit, I'll put the screws in the same order. But there's not a lot of point of doing that because I'll be moving this around. So at least I've shot a bit on YouTube so I can look back at the video footage for where the screws go back in. So is that all we've got in terms of screws? It looks like it. So I think someone else has tried to get this undone. Not had any any luck, and that's what they've done to try and get it undone. And screws under there? No. Right. So my guess is it opens up here, not here. I think it opened up there. Right, I'm going to put this on my lap to do, and if I get it open, I'll explain how I've done it. Oh, it was easier than that. As soon as I touched this, it started to come open. It's been held at the front here somewhere. Oh my god. Oh, it's all falling to bits. Oh, there we go. How about that? It literally fell open. So, let's not touch this. Uh, so, there's the battery contacts. That's the volume wheel. Uh, let's. The batteries didn't work. Right, bear with me. Right, so these are rechargeable batteries and they're 1.2 volts. And these are quite old as well, so maybe they're not as good as that. But this would run on one for 1.5 volt batteries, but I don't have any. But what I do have is these EBL C size spacers. And I can just put a couple of uh, AA batteries in here. Slide in there and clip in somehow, and they will provide one and a half volts with the correct size outer shell. And although they won't contain as much charge as one of these, if it was if it was a, an alkaline battery, uh, so it won't run as long. So it'll provide the right voltage, but it won't run as long as the other ones. So these are quite handy because these are cheap. And alkaline ones of these are much more expensive and much harder to find. So these are quite handy in a pinch like I've got right now. I can use these ones instead. But they are tricky to get in with springs and stuff like that. So let's see how we go. Let's put the bottom ones in first. Pretty, but it does work. I'm going to put the back of the case on if I've got the right one there. I might have the wrong one. The wrong one. If there's any loud noises, I'll have to edit those out. There we go. Right, let's open her up again. So batteries are in. There's our belt. Oh, it's very floppy. Nobody wants anything that floppy, do they? So this is definitely a belt. A belt replacement needed. And I don't have a belt of that size. No, I haven't got anything close. I did buy a multi-pack of bands like this from eBay, but they weren't they weren't all misshapen. I sent them back, it was so disgusting, they're just not fit for purpose. I've got this, a multi-pack, and that's the biggest I've got, but it's entirely the wrong shape. 
So I guess I've got to look for, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go again back onto uh, eBay or Amazon and find one of my, yeah, even that's too big. Find one of my, oh, maybe not. I'm going to find one of my trusted suppliers for bands, possibly Deck Tech, and buy um, a multi pack of bands. Um, and I'll, I'll need flat bands because I trust them, but these these cheaper bands you get from um, non reputable suppliers are just. Um, terrible quality they're very very cheaply made so anyway let's see if that's going to work obviously it's the wrong shape band but is it going to be sufficient enough to play the tape which i haven't even got in there so i'm just going to play it like that and see what happens to the band oh it does spin now that's interesting oh, i can't stop it there's actually two can you see that on there Zoom in a little bit, I think. Can you see that there? It's got like a ridge in the middle. So I wonder what that's all about. I'm going to put this elastic band on that top ridge instead of the bottom one so it doesn't slide off of this so easily. I would just be happy if I can get some sound out of this, even if the band's not right. So let's put a tape in. It's still slow. Was this the, I can't remember whether this was the one that worked on the mains. I think it did. Let's try it. I'm not sure whether to take, you should take the batteries out first. I think I probably will. Oh, built-in thermal fuse. So if it gets too hot, it will cut out. Okay, please don't try this at home. Do not connect up your electronics into the mains power supply when they're unscrewed, because you could die. And nobody wants that. So it's actually, I've turned this power switch off at the moment. Urgh. So let's turn it on and see if it goes bang. Nope, we're all still alive, so let's press play, if I can find play now. Where's the volume? Oh, that's a bit scratchy. So it's actually playing, it's quite slow, but there's no point in me adjusting the speed because it's got the wrong band on it. So I'm going to take a punt and get some bands and uh, I'll turn it down now. I'm going to take a punt and get some bands and see if we can get this playing well enough to use in the garden or in the bathroom or something like that. Okay, so moving on to this one, might as well take this one to pieces eh, and see what's going wrong with this one. First thing I'm going to do though is remind myself what the problem is. I'm going to plug in the mains lead here. That's got a bit loose. There we go, and I've turned it on. Let's find my tape and plug it in. Ah, right, I think this is belts as well. You can hear it's working. 
and you could see it move slightly when I press play. You can hear a motor now, yeah? Let me bring it closer to the mic. Yeah, so it is spinning in one direction. It's not spinning in the other direction. So I bet this is belts, which was the case for the other one as well. So let's get this one apart and we'll have a look and see what the situation is whether we've got a belt already. I might have a belt that will fit already or I might have to order a belt for this one too. What I'll probably do is get a multi-pack of belts from one of my trusted belt suppliers. I bought, um, that's a long screw. Uh, I bought a pack of belts, a cheap pack of belts from eBay or Amazon once and they were misshapen and just not very even so they just they were useless I sent them back normally for a five or six quid pack of belts I wouldn't send them back because it's not worth it but they were so bad and again we've got the shorter screws at the front and the longer screws at the back probably a joke in there somewhere make it up So the shorter screws, oh look at that, hang on one second, that is the screw that goes in, they're two different sizes, so this, the longer screw goes in, this is to remind me, the, of the two short screws, the longer screw goes in the side of all of the, um, all of the sockets. So I think that's probably it for all the screws, let's take my cassette out, I might be, oh yeah the whole thing's just... Wow, well, that's a bit fierce. Oh, that was easy. God, I wish it was easy to take away, take apart electronics now. So, look at that. I'll spin it around in a minute and you can have a better look of it. There we go, we can get a much better look of that. Now, there's the motor. There's a date on the side of this motor, 84523. So 23rd of can you hear me? There's a date on the side of this motor, 23rd of May 1984. I guessed it was early 80s, so that's not too bad. And the other one, which I've got here still, let's have a look at the motor, the date on the motor there. Sorry, you're a bit zoomed in. Can you see that motor there? That one is, I said this was going to be late 70s. Uh, 5471234. Five, no, that's not a date, is it? That doesn't really help. But look how easy it is to work on this. Having said that, I can't get to the belts. So it's easy to clean. You just take it to pieces and give it a clean. Which I'm going to do that once I've got a belt. I want to make sure it's all working properly first. Sorry, the audio is going to be all over the place here, isn't it? Now, how do we get to the belts? Okay, so what I've noticed is this screw and the other one on the other side was the one that screwed through the case. And that just lifts up and it pivots here and there's one more screw there. So what do I do with my screwdriver? There it is. So can you see that one there? Yeah, you can just about see it, can't you? So let's see if we get that one out as well. Oh, that was really stiff. Don't want to take that one out because that looks as if it's holding in this part of the mechanism. So that's the screw for that one. That's longer than the other two um, case screws. Oh, there we go. So that whole mechanism. Wow, what's holding that in there? I feel a bit of cable just under here. So let's see if we can have a look. I don't want to desolder anything because I haven't got my soldering line handy. So, can you see anything more than I can see? Sorry about the shaky camera work here, but lifting this up here, that's the cable that was stopping me from lifting it up. 
but it's under a little clip. I don't know whether you can see it. There's uh, there we go. So it's held into the circuit board just there. So I wonder if I can get that out of the way. Be careful what I do here. I wonder what that's for. That micro switch there. I've got a fear I'm making a right mess of this now. Can I get to the belts? Yes, I can get to the belts, and it's obvious why they're not working, although you probably can't see it. I can only get to the belts if I flip this you this part of the unit up the other way. But this bit of cable stuck under here. I wonder if that is a clue. Do I have to take out the whole thing? I'd rather not. Let's loosen it and see if we can get in there. We have got a magnetic bit. Now that's pretty solid in there, that's not going to help at all I don't think. So what I'm trying to do is just release this cable here. Oh I've got to be, I've got to be really careful. It feels like it's glued under there. It might be glued. Let me have a think. Okay, I managed to get that cable untucked from the main motherboard, the main, or um, well, the only circuit board. It was this pink one here. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. So can I get this all the way over? Okay, this one's not going to be so easy to fix. So there's the belt. It feels not very springy. The question is, how am I going to get that belt out from under there? Oh my word. This plate's going to have to come off, isn't it? Well... It's not working now. It might be more than not working by the time I finish this. And the problem is, when I finally get this all taken to pieces, uh, I'll have to order a belt, and will I be able to get it back together again? So I want to leave that in there. So I'm just getting myself some tape. I can tape that in there, so that's not going to go missing. Just tape it, tape the screw, so I know the stack screw goes to that connector. Uh, what's that? The other side. Oh, that's the other side of that um, spool there. Let's see if we can get in on this screw here. Can you see? You can still see that. So I've got the camera set up on a tripod and I'm looking around the camera. Oh my god, I can see a spring moving there. Can you see that? It's moving as I'm screwing the thing. If I get this metal piece off, we might find that the whole thing just springs go everywhere. So let's see what's going on. Okay, let's put that somewhere safe. The moment of truth. Okay, so which way around was this now? That was on there like that. So that's where the screw came out. Let's give it more tape. 
And I can't forget where that goes now. This is the belt. Not very stretchy, but it is a round belt. Now I was experimenting with the other cassette. Right, one second. Uh, hang on. That's the new one. That's the old one. Hang on. Okay, I've looked through my pack of belts. And this one is the closest I can find that's not too big, but I think it's too small. So I'm gonna well, how I'm gonna test this, I don't know. It's quite messy in here, but that feels too tight for me to me. But you never know. For the sake of a few screws, I'm going to put that back in again and see if it's actually going to help. If not, I know that belt is too small and the other belt is too big and I'll just order one that's between the two sizes. So, let's take off my tape. Come in. Had to edit out the sound there for a uh, an interruption. I'm going to over tighten that. Now, where's that other cow? Oh, stuck to the microphone, stuck to the speaker. Who will remember where this gun came out of? I think it came out of here. Right, let's just seat it back in the right position without getting anything trapped if I can. I think that went behind there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. So I think that's about it. We've got just about enough room to get some a power in there. Now do not try this at home. This is mains voltage through here. Do not, unless you're a trained professional electrician, do not open up equipment like this and plug it into mains. Okay. Let's shoot, uh, that was a pause. So this one must be no, that's eject. Ah, I have unplugged. I have turned off the switch for the mains. One second. There we go. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh, that must be fast forward.
Oh, play is this one over here. Now, yeah, that's interesting. It's playing too slow and it's playing too quiet. Okay, so I've done some tinkering on this. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. It's definitely running slow, but uh, the volume might not be because of the slowness. It's just that the speaker is resting on the desk. So I'll lift it up and you can listen to the difference. So it's not on very high volume. That's off. Loud noise coming. So my guess is that's probably the volume it was, but it is running more slowly. So I think this here is the um, the pot for adjusting the speed. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that. And it's the tape speed is not very stable either, but um, you can probably see from further up here. The um, pinch roll is dirty. So I'm just going to do this by ear for the time being. There's quite a bit of difference on there, so I reckon we're going to be all right. Could be the belts that's wrong. Let me have a listen to it off camera. God, I really need some better kit. I can't get the tripod in close enough to show you what I'm about to do here. Uh, I really need some lighting because it's dark. It's getting dark outside now, so the lighting is not very good. So I think that belt is probably close enough to the original to be fine. I've adjusted the speed, but it's still there's still a lot of wow where it's the speed is going faster and slower. But this um, pinch roll here is a little bit dirty, and I found out recently that you're not supposed to use um, IPA isopropyl alcohol on these because it can damage the rubber. Let's see how it feels. I mean, it feels quite rubbery still. What you're supposed to use is, in America, they call it denatured alcohol, and here we call it surgical spirit, and it's purple in colour. I'm going to go and get some tomorrow, um, but meanwhile, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of a trick I learned in my youth. Sorry about the suspect camera angles here. When I was a kid, we had a Scale Extrix type racing set which was called Aurora, and we've still got it actually, and uh, occasionally I'll dig it out of the garage and I'll play with it. But it had little rubber tyres, which were the drive tyres for, um, for the cars that went on it. And they used to pick up dirt off the track, which was invariably on the carpet. But what we used to do is get a piece of tape and run the tyre over the tape, and it would take the dirt off the rubber tyre and take a tiny little layer of the rubber off the tyre as well. And that's all I'm going to do now to try and clean this pinch roller because we've got quite good access to it. So basically I've stuck the tape on the pinch roller and now I'm going to hold it against the pinch roller while I pull it through. And that has taken off some of the, some of the dirt and some of the rubber, if I can get it in the shot. So can you see that there? That's the remnants of the rubber. Now if we zoom in a bit, if we can, you can probably hopefully see now that that has cleaned up that pinch roller quite a bit, apart from a bit of dust. What I like about my office is everything is to hand. What I don't like about it is it's too small. So that now has cleaned up that uh, pinch roller quite a bit. Just taking the dirt off the face, some of the contamination, and maybe a tiny little few microns of rubber, because this is never going to be hi-fi, is it? So, let's turn the power back on. Pop the tape back in. 
give it a bit of a forward and play again. It's just a bit fast. Let's turn it up and have, oh, let's angle it up and have a listen. That's not bad at all. Excellent. So I reckon. Ooh, I reckon. Let's listen to the next track. Probably a bad choice of track, so let's go to a different track. I can't remember which one's forward here. So the third one is forward. Let's go to the next track. So I reckon I might clean the... Uh, so that's the pinch roller, and that is the capstan there, which pushes against the pinch roller and spins and regulates the speed. I'll just give that a clean with some alcohol, and I'll give the head a clean with some alcohol in a minute. But I reckon, because this is not going to be used with headphones and it's not really a hi-fi unit I reckon that's probably going to be a good enough fix for me let's have a listen Okay, that's good enough, I think. Let's give it a clean. Okay, so another tip. Do not spray alcohol near mains electricity because alcohol is flammable. I'm just going to give this a rub. You're supposed to do it sideways, not up and down. Sideways. Lovely to be able to work on it like this. So where's that play? Actually, I don't want to play, so so that just came off of the uh, that came off the head. Got it dirty, dirty already. Let's try again. So all I'm using is IPA on here. Quite dirty, still, even still. So there you go. So it's just one point. I'm going to use a, a drier piece, get a bit more IPA. Yeah. There we go. I'm using a I'm using a clean piece now of the Q-tip of the cotton bud. Still a little bit of dirt on there. One, two, three. Yes, yeah, I'm going to get another cotton bud. Okay. So this is the fifth time of cleaning this head now and I'm not going to stop until there's no residue coming off on the cotton bud. Sounds nice and squeaky. Look at that, it's still coming off. Now is that normal? Any experts out there? I am not an expert. Yeah, it's still coming off. One, two, 
So it's still a little bit coming off there, that's weird isn't it? I think that'll do though, so I'm going to clean up this as well, let's have another squirt. So that's on a clean bit of the cotton bud. And any residue of this will, uh, look at the state of that. Any residue will just evaporate off after a, after a minute, not even a minute probably. You know, as far as the dust in the mechanism is concerned, I'm not too worried. It's very greasy. I don't want to get that on the rest of the mechanism. So that's going to do for the time being. Okay, that's pretty cool for the time being. God, I can't remember where the stop is, there we go. I'm going to get some headphones and try it with headphones. Okay, so I've got my headphones plugged in here. And of course it's only coming out of the left headphone because this was before stereo. So this is a mono unit and it only sends uh, audio out of the left earbud. Because back in the day you didn't, that's quite loud actually. You, back in the day, you wouldn't have a stereo cassette deck like this. Um, I think they were all mono back in those days. But it sounds pretty good, so I'm just going to listen and see if that sound is, see if that speed is wavering in and out. It's pretty amazing, really. Although it's only coming out of one headphone, it really is quite a good sound. You know, it's it's got a decent amount of bass, and I know these headphones, so they they're a little bit heavy on bass, but it's. It's still got a good amount of bass. It's really clear. I wish I had an easy way of getting the sound out of something like this and into um, some sort of digital recording. So I'm happy with that.
pretty cool. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.